Andover Bookstore is very happy to welcome Julia Qualick for another wonderful evening of music. She had done a Celtic music event a couple years ago that was terrific. Um, she will be singing American folk music accompanied by famed guitarist Peter Lorenko, who also teaches music at Phillips Academy. So that should be a wonderful combination. We remember Julia from when she was a little girl at the store and she would come for Susan's story time. And then also, you had come years ago, we looked at an old tape. Susan and I did a history of the bookstore for the 200th birthday. So we looked at an old tape that we had done 20 years ago at the Historical Society, and there was Julia in the front row, hardly <laughs> squirming through the whole thing. And then she came back 20 years later and heard it all over again. <laughs> and we were also remembering, she came once to a um, costume party, and she had her hair as Pippi Longstockings. And her hair was sticking up in braids, red braids, kind of coming out at, at an angle on the side of her head. And we said, Julia, how did you do that? And she said, with coat hangers. <laughs> yes. okay, because there were three little Qualic girls, and this is one of them. So we've known them since they were very tiny. Um, let me see. She started to sing and play the violin at the age of three. She connects best with folk, country, and jazz styles. In a quest for her own sound, um, when she went to college, she took classical voice lessons and then picked up some Scottish fiddling techniques. Claiming her Scottish heritage and going full speed ahead with Celtic influences, she has particularly strong flair for Celtic music. She attended Furman University and also studied in Vienna, Austria. Um, <clears throat> she's in the process of recording a group of original songs for a solo album where she says, folk meets jazz meets classical. And we will carry that here when, when it comes out. It is a lot of fun to visit Julia's MySpace site. You can hear her sing four different songs on her site. And she lists some of her influences. This isn't all of them, but she lists Alison Krauss, Paul Simon, Neil Young, Queen, The Chieftains, Etta James, and Stephen Foster. That's among many others, but I love the whole range of her musical enthusiasms. So I'll turn the event over to Julia and Peter. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming tonight. Um, it's really a pleasure to be able to share music with you and music that I really connect with. Um, I've been playing it for a while, so it's been a part of me for a long time. Um, so thanks for sharing your Thursday night with me. Um, First, I'm going to play a selection called Appalachia Waltz, written by Mark O'Connor. Um, he originally wrote it for solo violin in 1993, and then he adapted it in 97 for, um, for an album that he did with Yo-Yo Ma and Edgar Meyer, which some of you maybe are, are familiar with. Um, but I'm going to play the solo violin version.
Peter. Um, and Peter was kind enough to join me in this little production. Um, and he's a phenomenal guitarist, and it's, it's really been a pleasure to play with him. Um, and I'm really glad that you all get the chance to hear him. Um, so we are going to do uh, Shenandoah, um, or Across the Wide Missouri. It has two titles. Um, and it comes from, well, it's an old American folk song. And sh the Shenandoah Valley is located in North Carolina. And this song is written about <coughs> the pioneers who went from the east to west. And so they left the Shenandoah River, or Shenandoah Valley, and went to the Missouri River. The Missouri River was considered the threshold to the far west. So there's reference of going from Shenandoah to the Missouri, or Missouri, as the natives say. <coughs> Red Rose Live All Way. This is a Stephen Foster song. Not one of his better known songs, but it's from a collection of parlor ballads. Um, let's see, it's from 1850. That's when the collection was published. And um, it draws from Anglo, Scots, Irish um, traditions, um, but it has a lot of, um, has a lot of Tenuto and fermatas in it, because um, as you'll notice with the words, it's talking about, oh, I wish that things would live forever, that the, the red rose would live all way and things would never die. Um, and there's a lot of imagery with the seasons and changing of seasons. And so the fermatas kind of reflect um, that part of the text or that meaning of the text. And so for all of those of you who are not musicians, a fermata is when you hold a note. So you'll hear a lot of suspended notes. Why should the beautiful die? 
because I'm going to change it. <laughs> um, I'm going to do one called The Hot Canary. <laughs> um, it's, it's a traditional American tune. Um, I don't know how old it is, unfortunately. Or who wrote it, but it's fun. So <laughs> I'll play it. <laughs>
called B Flat Rag. Um, and it's a tune from Alabama. And it has Cajun roots, so you'll notice that it's got some syncopation in it. Um, and I learned it from a fiddler from the South named Jim Calthon, who specializes in Alabama tunes. Um, yeah, so I hope you like it. called The Scarlet Tide, and it's written by Alison Krauss and featured in the motion picture Cold Mountain. Um, I'm sure you've noticed that a lot of the songs I'm singing are kind of sad or forlorn, um, but that's typically what ballads are um, for American folk music. Um, but for me, I, I feel like I have a strong connection to them, and a lot of them have um, what's called a pentatonic scale. Um, so it's using only five notes of the scale, and it, it gives um, sometimes sort of an eerie, um, an eerie flavor to songs, when they're in minor, that is. Um, for all you non-musicians, that just means it's arranged in a certain way that naturally makes you feel a little more um, mourning, I guess, for the music. <laughs>
How Can I Keep From Singing is the next song. Um, there's a well-known version by Enya of this song. Other than that, if you're not an Enya listener, you may not have heard it. Um, it's also an old um, American um, song written by a Baptist minister um, in, I believe, 1848. I want to say, um, in his collection of Sunday school hymns for children. So um, anyway, it's, it gives a beautiful message of when things are right with the world, um, how can I keep from singing? How can I not be joyful and just love life? So I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Life goes on in endless song above earth's lamentation. I hear the real go far off hill that hails a new creation through all the time. And it's entitled Louie Ann. Um, and I learned this uh, at a fiddle gathering, a fiddle school in North Carolina called the Swananoa Gathering. Um, it's a, f a long fiddle camp um, of all different styles that lasts the whole summer, every summer. Um, and that's where I learned it, and um, just from a friend of mine. I actually don't know the origin other than it's traditional American. Um, and it's 
It's very sweet. Probably written about someone called Louis Anne. song we're doing. <laughs> it's called Simple Gifts. Um, I'm sure you are familiar with it. Um, it's traditionally a shaker tune. Um, I'm going to cheat and look up my notes. <laughs> traditionally a shaker tune. Right, written by Joseph Brackett and, um, in 1848. It's known as a dance song. Um, I guess some people don't know that, but some of the words in it, turning, turning, near the end of the verse, are actually instruction for the dancers. So if you all feel the impulse, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs>
now for another heartbreaker. <laughs> uh, it's called Black is the Color. And it actually, way back in the day, in the 1700s, came from Scotland, but since was brought to the Appalachian Mountains and has become known more as an Appalachian tune, or Appalachian. Um, so, uh, it's about a woman who's lost her lover. He's out on the sea somewhere, and she doesn't know if he's going to return. Um, so she sings about him and how she wishes that someday they will again be together. Black is the color of my true love's hair. His face is which means that it came after bluegrass. That's what, uh, that's what old time means, when something has an old time heritage or categorization. Um, sorry, I reversed it. It, become, it comes before bluegrass. Old Is that what time. I said? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, you said after. Okay, old time comes before bluegrass. <laughs> Get it right. Okay, um, and it's traditionally done in the key of D, but we're doing it in the key of G tonight. Just for you. That's all, we can <laughs> That's all I know. So. <laughs>
so much. Thanks again, Peter. Oh, you're welcome. Why should the beautiful